Do you believe that we're living in what Bible prophecy calls the end of days? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is coming back in the fulfillment of Bible prophecy? A fascinating new survey finds a huge number of Americans of all races, religions, and political persuasions say yes to both questions. Why? What's going on? And what does it all mean? Good evening and welcome to the Rosenberg Report. We begin our first broadcast of 2023 by unpacking the new study released by Pew Research in December. Now the poll got almost no coverage in the mainstream media or the Christian media, but that's exactly why we launched the Rosenberg Report, to bring you stories that others won't. Now, it shouldn't be surprising that some Americans believe that we're living in the end of days and that Jesus Christ is coming back. What surprised me is how many believe this. This wasn't a survey of Christians only, and it wasn't conducted by a Christian organization. Pew is a non-religious and non-partisan research institution in the United States and one of the most respected. And what they found is amazing. Almost four in 10 of all American adults aged 18 and over, 39% to be precise, believe that we're now living in the end times. 39%, that's 103 million Americans. Now, not surprisingly, 63% of evangelicals believe this. What is surprising is that 29% of Americans who say that they're from non-Christian religions, like Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, and others, they believe it too. 30% of Americans of no particular religion believe that we are in the end times. And that includes 9% of atheists and 14% of agnostics. 34% of white Americans believe that we're in the end times. So do 33% of Asian Americans, 41% of Hispanic Americans, and get this, 68% of African Americans. That's amazing to me. 45% of all Republicans agree that we're in the end times, but so do 33% of all Democrats. That's unbelievable to me. Yet all this raises two critical questions. The first is this, why? Why do so many people believe that we're in the end times? The answer actually isn't complicated. Russia's invasion of Ukraine triggered the biggest land war in Europe since World War II. The death toll over the past year has been catastrophic. Upwards of 200,000 soldiers combined from both sides are dead, along with 40,000 civilians. And now Vladimir Putin is threatening to use nuclear weapons. And President Biden is warning that Putin could set into motion Armageddon. That's Biden's words, not mine, Armageddon. That's what he said. And that's the biblical word for the end of days. Meanwhile, this biblical plague of COVID. Now it's mostly getting better, but COVID deaths have just passed 6.7 million people worldwide. Inflation is surging, global economies are reeling, stock markets are tanking, and it's not clear that 2023 will be any better. With so much upheaval, should it really be surprising that so many people believe that we're living in the end times? The bigger question is, are they right? Now, just over my left shoulder is the Mount of Olives. That's exactly the place where Jesus told his disciples that the second temple would be destroyed in a judgment, uh, a prophecy that came true just a few decades after Jesus said it and no one believed him at that time. That's also Mount of Olives right there where Jesus' disciples asked him, so when will all these end times things happen? What will be the sign of your coming, your return to earth and the, of the end of the age? Jesus could have given them a very Washington political answer. No comment, next question. Instead, Jesus gave his followers a detailed list of signs to watch for. One of those lists is in Matthew 24. Jesus said, you will be hearing of wars and rumors of war. See to it that you are not frightened, for those things must take place, but that is not yet the end. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And in various places, there will be famines and earthquakes, but all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. Then 
they will deliver you to tribulation. They will kill you and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. And at that time, many will fall away and will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and will mislead many. Because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. We get more details in Luke 21. Jesus said there will be in various places plagues, terrible diseases spreading across the earth, and famines and great signs from heaven. There will be signs in the sun and moon and stars, and on the earth dismay among nations and perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves men fainting from fear and the expectation of things which are coming upon the world. But when these things take place, when they begin to take place, straighten up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. We get more details in uh, Mark chapter 13, where Jesus said, now learn the parable from the fig tree. When its branch has become tender, and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. Even so, you too, when you see these things happening, recognize that he is near, right at the door. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Now think about that list. Wars and rumors of war, check. False religions, false prophets, false messiahs, check, check, check. Soaring crime rates and lawlessness? Check, check. Terrible persecution of Christians? Check. Earthquakes? Check. Famines? Check. Plagues spreading across the earth? Check. And the gospel spreading to every nation? It's not a full check, but check. You know, it's sort of a check. Look, that said, the parable of the fig tree may be the most intriguing of all these uh, prophecies on this list. Why? because throughout the Old Testament, God uses the symbol of the fig and the fig tree as symbols of Israel and the Jewish people. What Jesus is saying is that when we see the rebirth, the reblooming of the state of Israel and Jews returning to the promised land after centuries of exile, when we see all that happening all along with, in addition to all these other end time signs, then recognize that he is near that his hand is right on the door and he's about to re-enter history. There's no question that we are living in what the Bible calls the end times. The real question is, so what? How are you and I gonna live differently in light of this extraordinary truth? Don't go anywhere when the Rosenberg Report returns Joel drills deeper into the Pew study and reveals just how many Americans believe that Jesus Christ is coming back, possibly in our lifetime, only on TBN. Do you believe that Jesus Christ will come back to earth one day in fulfillment of end times Bible prophecies? A shocking new poll finds that more than half of all Americans say yes. And they don't mean symbolically or metaphorically. They mean they believe Jesus is coming back literally, physically to this city and possibly in our lifetime. Hi, I'm Joel Rosenberg. Welcome back to the Rosenberg Report, coming to you from Jerusalem, the very place where the Hebrew prophets and the New Testament apostles told us that the Messiah would come and establish his kingdom in the last days. Now, let's drill deeper into that new study by Pew Research one of the most respected research firms in the United States. The survey got almost no attention when it was released last December from the mainstream media and barely any from the Christian media, but it's important. And what caught my attention most was this number, 55%. That's right, 55% of American adults 18 and over believe in the second coming of Christ. Now, the mainstream media might think that's ridiculous, crazy, wacko, and it's not worth reporting. No, but 55% is 142 million Americans. Now, given how 
little Bible prophecy is taught in churches these days, and how many Americans are drifting away from church, that's a shocking number. Obviously, most evangelicals, 92% in the Pew study, believe in the second coming. Jesus promised when he came the first time that he would come back again. And the apostles, the writers of the New Testament, reaffirmed these promises time and again. In fact, did you know that there are actually eight times more prophecies in the Bible concerning the second coming of Christ than his first coming? That's right. For every Bible prophecy in the Hebrew scriptures concerning the first coming of the Messiah, there are eight more prophecies telling us that the Messiah is coming back. But what really stunned me in this new Pew study was how many non-Christians believe it. Look at this number, 18% of Americans who say they're members of non-Christian religions believe that Jesus is coming back to earth one day. Non-Christian religions, this includes Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, Jews, others. The study doesn't break down the numbers for each religion, but most of these are undoubtedly Muslims. Why do I say that? Because the Quran and other Islamic texts teach that Jesus is coming back one day. Muslims believe that Jesus was the Messiah, but they don't think of it the way we Christians do. Uh, they don't believe he was God, nor do they believe that Jesus died on the cross here in Jerusalem or was raised, on the, uh, raised from the dead on the third day. But while this may surprise you, devout Muslims are taught from childhood that Jesus is coming back in the last days of history, not as the savior or the king of the world as we believe, but as the deputy, as the lieutenant to the one they call their savior, the Mahdi or the 12th Imam. Now, when we drill deeper into these numbers in the Pew study, things get even more interesting. 53% of white Americans believe in the second coming of Christ. So do 55% of Hispanics and 39% of Asian Americans. And listen to this, an astonishing 77% of African Americans, three out of four, believe in the second coming. What's more, 69% of all Republicans believe in the second coming. That might not surprise you, but this might. Fully 45% of all Democrats believe that Jesus Christ is literally one day coming back to earth. That's right, 45% of Democrats. Now, the big question is why? Why do so many Americans believe that we're living in the last days and that Jesus is coming back to earth, possibly in our lifetime? Many Christian pastors and priests have stopped preaching Bible prophecy. They've stopped talking about prophecies regarding the last days and, and teaching about the hope of Christ's second coming. Some don't believe it. Some don't understand it. Others simply don't care or prioritize it. The mainstream media certainly isn't talking about such things. I mean, seriously, are you going to hear any of this on CNN, MSNBC, the NBC Nightly News, or 60 Minutes? Of course not unless it's to mock those of us who take it seriously. And yet, a solid majority of Americans, 55%, tell pollsters that they really do believe that Jesus will return, even if they have no idea when. Now, some of this is the residue of what Americans were taught before they stopped going to church, before pastors stopped preaching the blessed hope of Christ's return and the glorious kingdom that he will set up one day for those of us who believe. Yet I believe that the Holy Spirit is also stirring people's hearts to long for the day when the Messiah will return and make all things right. And this poll reinforces my belief that as this world spins out of control, many will be curious, many are curious to know what God says about the future and why it matters. They just don't know where to turn. And that's one more reason why we launched the Rosenberg Report. Because God doesn't simply want us to understand what's happening right now. He wants us to understand what's coming next. That's what Bible prophecy is. It's an intercept from the mind of the all-knowing, all-seeing, all-powerful God of the universe. It's news from the future to help us live with more courage, boldness, and holiness today. The mainstream media couldn't care less, but you do, because you know full well 
that if we're really living in the last days, and if Christ really is coming back soon to this city to judge the quick and the dead and set up his kingdom, then you and I need to be ready and found faithful. Coming up next on The Rosenberg Report, a Palestinian journalist hates Joel's latest book, Enemies and Allies. He trashed it in his review. Find out why and Joel's response after the break. So, a Palestinian journalist hates my book, Enemies and Allies. Now, you might think, duh, Joel, you're an Israeli, you're an evangelical, what's the big surprise? The surprise is that the article was written by a man whose bio says he's an award-winning journalist, born to a Christian family. Yet his review typifies everything that's wrong with journalism these days. Daoud Kutab is a Palestinian. He lives in Amman. He's entitled to his own opinions, but not his own facts. And almost every fact in his review is dead wrong. He writes, while it's natural as an Israeli American that he mentions Israel 864 times, Egypt 446 times, Jordan 293 times, and Saudi Arabia 177 times, the word Palestine is mentioned only 13 times. What? I write about Palestine and the Palestinians 198 times. Kutab accuses me of never mentioning the West Bank but rather using the religious Jewish settler term of Judea and Samaria. Actually, I specifically discuss the West Bank 14 times, Gaza 23 times. But yes, I use the term Judea and Samaria in the book. But Daoud, the term didn't originate with Israeli settlers. The term comes directly from the Bible. That's right, the Bible mentions Judea 51 times and Samaria 117 times. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus himself famously said, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. So don't ask me to apologize for quoting the very words of Jesus Christ, because I'm never going to do that. Now, if that weren't enough, the award-winning journalist Daoud Kutab claims that Rosenberg fails to tell his readers about the reality facing Palestinians. Seriously? Did you read chapter 26? Let me quote a few lines. Over the last several decades, Lynn and I have made many Palestinian friends here in the region and abroad. While no Israeli can truly understand the pain the Palestinian people are going through today, Lynn and I empathize and pray faithfully for a way forward. After all, these brave, proud, remarkable, beautiful people have suffered so much in the past century. They deserve something vastly better, as do their children and grandchildren. Then, a few pages later, I wrote this. I want to share a few thoughts about my friends and neighbors, the Palestinian people, who are enduring a painful tragedy that must not be ignored. And then, a few sentences later, not enough evangelicals will say this, but I will. God loves the Palestinian people. He cares about their plight. He cares about their future, and so must we. To turn a blind eye to the Palestinian people is morally wrong. To discount their hopes and dreams and fears and struggles is cold and inhumane. Two million Palestinians live in the Gaza Strip. Three million live in the West Bank. Their lives and souls and fortunes and children and grandchildren matter. Okay, let's consider one more accusation. Kutab writes, what is further infuriating is that this Christian leader who lives in Jerusalem doesn't let his readers know that Palestinian Christians exist and mentions only twice the term Arab Christians. Daoud, really, I have to ask again, did you even read my book? I write repeatedly about my love for and my visits with Arab Christians to hear their hearts, to learn more about their challenges, and to understand better how to pray for and encourage them. 
I write about my love for Palestinian Christians and how our ministry, the Joshua Fund, invests in them. In chapter 24, for example, I wrote this. Aside from caring for my own family and friends and being a writer, investing in the people of the Middle East and strengthening the church in this region is one of the great passions of my life. In 2006, Lynn and I founded the Joshua Fund, a nonprofit organization dedicated to educating and mobilizing Christians to bless Israel and her neighbors in the name of Jesus, according to Genesis chapter 12, verses one through three. The Joshua Fund has hosted conferences and seminars all over the world to help evangelicals better understand what the Bible teaches about God's love for both Israel and her Arab and Muslim neighbors, and to encourage Christians to learn, pray, give, and go to the work of the Lord in the Middle East. The Joshua Fund has also invested more than $50 million toward caring for Holocaust survivors, Syrian and Iraqi refugees, widows, orphans, and other vulnerable people in the region, and toward strengthening the church in Israel, the Palestinian Authority, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Iraq, and Egypt, equipping and encouraging pastors, distributing Bibles, even helping to build the first Christian radio station in the history of Iraq, among many other projects. Look, I'll concede one mistake in that paragraph. After Enemies and Allies was published, the staff of the Joshua Fund told me that since, since 2006, the ministry has actually invested more than $80 million, not $50 million, towards strengthening the church in both Israel and the Arab world, including in our Palestinian Christian brothers and sisters. Look, Daoud, I've never met you, but I don't hate you, nor do I mind that you hate my book. But shouldn't an award-winning journalist get his facts straight? It's exactly this kind of media bias that moved me to launch all Israel news, all Arab news, and now this show, to share the truth about our part of the world, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God.